Joining us now, Congressman Brian Stile, back with us from House Financial Services, and Wall Street Pro, great author, Carol Roth. First to you, Congressman, your reaction to the news coming in, the president just caved. He's giving in to Senator Joe Manchin, saying, do just a health care spending bill, not spending on climate change. What's your reaction? This administration still wants to spend, so I think we have another momentary win, but by all means, we need to remain vigilant. This is an administration that wants to spend us into oblivion. It's the reckless spending from this administration and one-party Democratic control that's driving inflation. And so there's a short-term win here, but this is not over yet. This administration wants to spend your money, and they want to spend it on liberal priorities. It's, uh, Carol, to the congressman's point, by the way, this is happening as McClatchy is reporting major national interest building for Florida Governor Ron DeSantis for president. So that is happening right now, Carol. Uh, and we were, we, I, Carol, I want your reaction to this. President Biden said he did bring up the murder of Jamal Khashoggi with Saudi leaders. You're going to see him get hostile with a journalist asking about that fist bump with the Saudi prince. Watch this. Respect to the murder of Khashoggi, I raised it at the top of the meeting, making it clear what I thought of it at the time and what I think of it now. I said very straightforwardly, for an American president to be silent on an issue of human rights is this consistent with, inconsistent with who we are and who I am. He basically said that he, uh, he, he was not personally responsible for it. I, I indicated I thought he was. Yes. You're coming under a lot of fire for your fist bump with the crown prince. Why? <laughs> I just wanted to give you a chance to respond to that. But also, how can you be sure that another incident, another murder like Jamal Khashoggi's won't happen again? Well, God love you. What a silly question. How could I possibly be sure of any of that? Ooh, okay. What do you think, Carol? <laughs> the leader of the free world, ladies and gentlemen, uh, not embarrassed at all that he's up there. You know, Liz, this is just so um, embarrassing is the only word that comes to mind. He is trying to pursue short-term political gain ahead of our own long-term economic and national security. I don't know why he's there. I don't know why he's standing up and covering up for potential human rights issues. I don't know why he's going out and begging for oil when we could be solving those problems here. It's like like everything he does is either backwards or intentionally just trying to destroy the country. It's what Carol is saying. Also, Congressman, there's major fighting inside the Democrat Party. Nancy Pelosi reportedly outraged. She's demanding answers as to why Senator Manchin again blocked Biden's tax and climate spending agenda. Democrat Senator Manchin and Congressman Alyssa Slotkin, they're ridiculing the top spin that inflation is transitory when it's uh, been going up for 13 straight months. And it's at a 40-year high. Congressman, let's get your reaction to this exchange with Fox Business's Hillary Vaughn and Senator Manchin. Watch. President Biden said the inflation number today is outdated because it doesn't include a small drop in gas prices we've seen recently. Is he right to blame the data for a bad, a historically bad inflation number? I would hope that he was right and that we wouldn't be. But I, that's the same people that might have given him information saying it was transitory <laughs> a year ago. And it wasn't transitory. What do you say, Congressman? This administration continues to look for excuses. This has started off that it was transitory, like Senator Manchin just said. Then it was blame Putin. Then it was blame corporate greed. Now it's bad data. The, the obvious answer is it's the reckless spending and the policies of the Biden administration that are driving inflation. It's the reason we have to remain vigilant, change course in Washington, unleash American energy, not Saudi Arabian energy, American energy, and actually get spending under control here in Washington. The solutions aren't that hard. This administration just refuses to do it. And, uh, uh, Carol, given what the congressman just said, from from where you sit and how you see this all unfolding as a Wall Street expert, you know, now that this, the president, new, breaking news coming in, he is caving. He's saying basically, do not do climate spending. That's what the president is saying. He's saying yes to Senator Manchin on just health spending. It sounds like they don't want to go into, into the midterms empty-handed, that they want to bring in more spending to show to voters as they face losing control of Congress. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, they absolutely need a win. They need something to talk about because everything has just gone in the entirely wrong direction. But frankly, you know, it's funny that they're all pinning this on Manchin. They should be throwing a parade for this man. If it weren't for this man stopping Build Back Broke, we would not be seeing 9.1% inflation. We would be seeing hyperinflation. So, you know, they should be very, very grateful that he's, you know, willing to go along with anything, but that he's also stopped this 
this insane uh, additional spending on climate and all of these other things because we would be in a world of hurt. And yeah, now they're going to run around and see, look at all the wonderful things that we've done and how much better it has made your life. You know, to what Carol's saying, there, the, Congressman, we're tracking it here. Major fighting breaking out in Congress like we've never seen before as Congress is really at loggerheads and out of stand. So let's, let's, let's watch what happened uh, between Matt Gates, Gates and Mike Johnson fighting with Democrats in Congress over abortion. Watch this. You used the phrase unborn child in your, in your most recent debate. What does that phrase mean to you? The I am word. finished with you right now, and I do not yield. Miss Bass, you didn't use the words that were confusing. It was Miss Ross who used those words. Ooh, and if I want to ask questions to Miss Ross, she could choose whether or not to yield to give the answers. Yes, it's interesting. And cannot in the Judiciary Committee sit and answer the questions you on something as important question. as life or death it's when I control basis. the time is outrageous. Cohen is wrong. Canada is not the most free country in the world, young people. America is the greatest nation in the world. We are the most free most successful, most powerful nation back to that truth. Is my time. I will not yield, Mr. Cohen, brain. because your, your, your comments are absurd. This hearing is your absurd. Your comments are absurd. This, this hearing, absurd. It's, it's Mr. Johnson's time, Mr. Cohen. Thank you. This hearing is absurd. You know, Congressman, when you see that unfold, and I'm going to get Carol's reaction, too, we have talked to people who've come here from North Korea, from Cuba, from China, from oppressive nations from around the world. People who are voted, we talked to, voters are saying, why don't Democrats appreciate how great this country is in terms of its freedom? Listen, we're not Pollyannish here. We're not jingoistic. We understand the issues. We're just saying, why always a downbeat message? Why not more message of hope? Yeah, we unquestionably live in the greatest country in the world. The Democrats are frustrated because they're getting called out for the horrific policies that they're forcing Americans to live under. And for far too long, the legacy mainstream media has refused to call out the Democrats who are pushing this radical agenda. And now the rubber's going to hit the road this November. The Democrats are starting to realize that they're going to be out of power. They're darn frustrated. But I'll tell you, what's really frustrating is living under the policies of this administration. What's really frustrating is $5 gas. And so we need to change course. The American people should hold the Democrats in the House accountable come November. Yes. Yeah, so to what the Congressman is saying, Carol, do you feel like this is an issue of a crisis of leadership, that America can fix its problems? It's really a problem with leadership. I mean, they want a trillion dollars in tax hikes to Democrats. They keep demanding voters pay their fair share when that's about <laughs> funding their out of control spending. When they've had more than their share of their share of that, you know what I mean. So is this a, is this fixable? Or are the problems fixable? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that basically we're pulling back the curtain and we're seeing that this is a party that is all about a power and a money grab. You know, they used to say, we're the party of the working class. We're the party of the middle class. And they have been exposed. It's clear that they are not. Um, so that I think that it is fixable if we're willing to get people in there who have principles and who are serious about being committed to being that party of the average person and making the economy and the opportunities and economic freedom work for everybody, not just the people in power and their cronies. Well, that feels good. That was a great way to end <laughs> a great segment with Congressman Brian Stile and Carol Roth. Always terrific to have you both on. We'll do it again soon. It's good to see you. Have a good weekend.